Photoscape X Curves. This tool, which is a pro feature in Photoscape X Pro, is a very nice tool to have, one that you'll see in things like Lightroom, Photoshop, and others, but this tool allows you to bump certain colors or to dip certain colors, whether they're brighter or darker colors, and so many uh, photographers use this because it gives a very quick look and feel change to their image that can make it look more moody or more um, dynamic. It's a really nice tool to see, and I just got a comment on my YouTube channel, hey, could you show me more of what that looks like, how it works? So let's do that today. So to find this, uh, first you will need the Pro feature, or uh, the Pro Photoscape X, which is a $40 one-time purchase. So that's a bummer that's not just available for free. Nonetheless, if you hop over here in Edit, you can go to Adjustments, and you can go down here and hit Curves. When you hit Curves, it opens up this kind of square that has a line through it, and this is where the magic happens. And I'm gonna also walk through all the other uh, buttons down here as well, um, and sliders. So you have this where on the bottom left-hand side, that represents your dark colors uh, or your blacks. And then over there on the top, you're gonna to have your lighter colors. Uh, so what you're gonna do um, is just click on the line and you can make these uh, keyframes or these key points. Um, and what you're able to do is slide it up and then slide this down. Um, I'll do it pretty dramatically. So basically, uh, this is way up and this is way uh, way down. This one's way up. That bottom right-hand line, that is controlling your dark colors. So it's really crushing all the darker colors in your image. And then up at the top, it's super brightening some of the bright colors uh, in your image. So that's why these mountain uh, tops here that were white to begin with now are just uh, really bright and the water or some of the land here just became super dark because those colors got crushed now you don't have to be that dramatic here you know if you look at just doing a little s curve which is what a lot of people do you can compare and you would say all right so you got this one which looks plain fairly flat uh you know just neutral and that's what a photo to begin with is supposed to look like then you can add some of that dynamic flare to it and that's what it looks like with that dynamic flare we can zoom in here a bit closer to see what that kind of change looks like you went from here where it's real nice and flat to this one where now there's more contrast things are a little crushed more uh, but it could be what you're looking for because not everyone wants the most neutral looking photo now what's nice is they have a lot of good um, good tools in here to give you more flexibility so we can reset you can go over here and select just the red colors or just the green colors or just the blue colors in the image and that's going to bump those colors in your image so if there's a spot in the image that's a lot more green which is going to be like this like the mountains here not the peaks but the mountains you can then bump that and the thing is there's gonna be green in a lot of the image. So there might be some green in the water, there might be some green shades in the sky. And with those, you know, it's just, hey, let's see if the adjustment can still work really well here. So you do that and give it more of a green look to the image. But if you want it to just be a change locally for one specific portion of the image, you can go down and select a mask. A mask allows you to simply zoom in, or you can do it just freehand, but you can go and select just that portion of what you want that uh, curve tool to affect. So in this case, oh yeah, we're just going to do this uh, part of the mountain there. And then you can you know, bump that down or push that up, however you'd like, and you can give it that color. So if you ever wanted your grass to be greener, um, you can do that. You can make that happen. So you can definitely bump that up and you can go and add that to the other side as well and it will continue to make those adjustments. One thing that's nice with the mask tool is it's not just for uh, selecting. You can also erase. If you went too far in a certain part, you can erase some of it. You can also go and invert. So if you say, hey, I actually want the opposite 
to be selected, you can hit invert and it will invert the other side. So this shows what we had selected to begin with. We can invert to be the exact opposite. Very nice. They have that much flexibility in their mask tool. And don't feel like it has to be this dramatic. You can adjust it to be as, uh, as small of a adjustment to as large as you want. There's also an amount of the adjustment. So you say, oh wow, I really like that, but it's a little bit too exaggerated. You can slide that down and get just what you're looking for there. So definitely a nice thing to be able to do uh, in an image. So we have uh, talked about all those different things. We've talked about selecting just a specific color. Uh, what's nice is that, let's say you adjusted the greens just to where you like it. You can adjust the reds just to where you like it, the blues just to where you like it, and it will save all of those, and you can go back and adjust if you say, oh, now I need a bit more green, now I need a bit less red, um, all that's available. One thing that's nice is that you also can load in presets to this software as well for the curve tool. You can go down here to load, and if you have made a preset with the curves, you can do that. So I can just say, oh yeah, click here, and that's just a basic line that I drew, and I thought, hey, that looked pretty nice. I wanna be able to do that again. And it's possible that if you're editing similar photos, so let's say you have another image that looks very similar or taken at a similar spot, um, you could go and say, hey, I wanna try that preset over here and you could say, hey, that actually looks pretty good. Or you could continue to make some more adjustments, some more shifts, things like that to get the photo to exactly where you want it. Now, that's really nice. Uh, we're gonna hop back to our original photo here. We can also make our own presets. So let's say you made another edit and you're like, whoa, this looks so cool, this is awesome, you know, uh, whatever. You can say, this just looks super amazing. You can go and hit save. You can save that preset out, name it whatever you want. I'd encourage you to make your own folder for curves or for Photoscape X presets where you can just stuff all that stuff right there so you don't end up losing it. And um, if you ever did move computers or something, you could take all those with you by copying the file and putting it onto your computer. Uh, so that that's pretty nice to be able to have those different adjustments there as well. You can hit the compare button to compare it to uh, what it was originally. You can hit this side-by-side -side comparison so it cuts it in half where you can see your uh, right-hand side, uh, right-hand side that's gonna be what it was before to this side that's gonna be after. You can slide it around to see what you think about those different sliders. Uh, but yeah, that's how you can use um, the Curve tool in Photoscape X Pro. I'm you know, sorry to say that it is just for the Pro model. It is locked out of the free version. But it's a nice tool to have if you do have the pro feature. So you guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.